Trees are in green, the ocean is gray, sky is a vague blue. Come my way, my room is a mess. It could use a hand. My favorite TV shows are capturing. I know I must get it right, must get back in the fight. This can't be a surprise. I think I'll let it slide. I started the vehicle. It's charging right now. And you can't really see it, but it's at 86%. So we'll see uh, where it gets when I get to my final destination. But I kind of want to give you guys a rundown on what's going on today. You guys are probably lost. As you can see, we're in Fallon, Nevada. Uh, why, you may ask. Well, this is the start of my next adventure. Today, I will be driving what Life Magazine said in 1986 was the loneliest strip of highway in America, and that is Highway 50. Now, Highway 50 spans from Sacramento, California, all the way to Maryland, but the part of the highway that Life Magazine was talking about back in 1986 was the part of the highway that starts in Carson City, Nevada, and ends in Baker, Nevada. Doing my research, I decided to start in Fallon because once you leave the city of Fallon, you're pretty much on your own where you might see a car every once in a blue moon, and nothing else. I'm ready to to uh, drive this stretch of highway. It's gonna be fun, it's gonna be interesting, and um, I've driven some pretty desolate areas. So I will be fascinated and shocked to see what Highway 50 is looking like. Adventures like this is something I've dreamed of. Just being out on the open road, having a vehicle that has great gas mileage, that's stealth, that can blend. Being in a small town like Fallon, you're really not gonna see any RVs. I saw one RV and they stopped to get gas and kept it moving. Being in an actual like SUV or a car, traveling, you're able to just blend better say for instance you have to stay one night stay overnight you're not going to stick out like a sore thumb you're going to look like every other vehicle and what i like about this s um this uh, suv is that it has excellent gas mileage especially doing this highway 50 loneliest stretch in america road there's you're not gonna there's not too many gas stations you're gonna find on this on this stretch and so you have to truly make sure that you have gas and you have a vehicle that's not a gas guzzler um and so this vehicle gets 33 miles per gallon highway 29 city. That is just <laughs> impeccable. We're still in Fallon, but we have officially reached Highway 50. We are officially on Highway 50. There is a military base of some sort uh, on Highway 50. Look at these planes. Look how low they're flying. I don't even know what kind of planes. I think I saw a jet, but this is wild. Look at that. That was so cool. Oh, I'm so upset I didn't get the jet. Man, that was so cool. What? What do they got going on on Highway 50? I mean, I get it's so desolate that they can have some type of 
I guess military post out here, but man, I wish I would have got that jet. All right, that was pretty cool. On to our next, uh, on to the continuation of Highway 50. Let's go. making a quick stop before we uh, make our continue to make our way out of Fallon and this place is called the Sand Mountains this is freaking cool we're gonna take a quick look at this because um, I think it's amazing it's just this big huge sand mountain in the middle of nowhere Whoa, that's a huge dip Wow take your car out uh, in the middle of Fallon so there are some interesting things in, uh, to do in Fallon and interesting things to see in Fallon on the way out. There's a big sign that says, welcome, be safe, be legal. What does that mean? So that ahead right there is the big, huge sand mountain. And this guy's getting his little exercise in this morning. They have a lot of dips because I guess they don't want people to use this strip of road as like one big racetrack to speed up and fly over uh, on top of that big huge sand mountain that you see but we're gonna go take a look at it and then we're gonna head out and continue on because we've got, we got a long day ahead of us Wow that's pretty cool um, this is a place I would not like to overnight camp at <laughs> it would be probably too loud uh, people on their their ATVs and stuff yeah this is be a place I would not like to stay the night absolutely not <clears throat> Um, it's definitely four by four. Uh, you could get a, uh, a non four by four vehicle through here, but there is a lot of deep sand, lots of rocks, gravel, huge, it just, it's a lot. It'd be a, a lot of, a lot of damage on your vehicle. Isn't that cool? They're just on their little ATVs. Wow. That looks dangerous. <laughs> that looks dangerous as heck. This is a this is amazing. This is living, man. You're out in the middle of nowhere. There's bathrooms too. That's pretty cool. And it looks like some salt flats out there too. But you're literally out in the middle of nowhere with your RV, ATVs, and just going up this big, huge sand mountain. So while on Highway 50, I came across this really cool area. Uh, I don't know what it is, but these rocks look like they spell out names. Uh, let's go out and check it out. Again, this is pretty freaking cool. All right. Let's see. You hear that? That sounds like a jet. Like a fast jet. Anyways. We're out here in the middle of freaking nowhere. And I saw this little pull off and there's warning signs. I don't know what that says, but there's just a bunch of rocks out here, man. I think this must have been like a part of this, uh, a lake that's dried up. But these rocks spell something. I don't know what that spells. It says, I, it's like a, a O something something why I don't know these rocks spelled something at one point I guess people spelt something is that a heart or something I don't know what that is oh that's a nine and it just looks so cool that looks like a heart with the letter with the initials J JR looks like so yeah people come out here and they like spell their names or initials and stuff in rocks. But you got some tumbleweed over there. And you can see like car tracks of people that have come through here before. Let's go see what this sign says. Here it is. That sign says warning, restricted area, keep out, authorized personnel only. <laughs> Authorized personnel only, what's out there? Uh, fam, do y'all see anything out there? You can't go past that gate, what's out there? Huh, makes me wonder, huh? I've 
notice there are also some historic markers that I've been passing. So if I come up on another historic marker, we'll stop and read it and uh, see the history behind it. Isn't that beautiful? That is beautiful. That horse just crossed. Look at that beautiful horse. He's looking at me too. He just crossed this desolate area. Wow. You see the most beautiful things on Highway 50. That horse is beautiful. Wow. Okay, I found another historic marker. I've passed so many of them, so we're gonna go in and see what this one is. I just wouldn't feel right not at least doing one historical marker with you guys. Let's see what this says. This is Rock Creek Cold Spring Station. Rock Creek was an important stagecoach stop on the Overland Mail and Stage Company's historic line along the Simpson route between Salt Lake City and Geno, 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 Genoa, uh, Nevada, which was operated by John Butterfield. Okay, so the Pony Express constructed the Cold Spring Station in 1860 on the sagebrush bench eastward across the highway so this is cool all right rock creek cold spring station constructed by the pony express in 1860. in Austin City the first kind of piece of civilization oh <sighs> and you know this gas about to be expensive well 469 it's not that bad let's wait for this gentleman to move so that I can get some gas appreciate you fella appreciate you all right let's get some gas uh, I drove about two hours almost two hours and I'm still at three-fourths of a tank not bad great gas mileage i got gas i got some uh, pretzel thins and they had some really cool stickers i got some granola i got <clears throat> this sticker right here brace for it i survived the loneliest highway in america nevada sticker and then i've got this three this other sticker it's really cool i survived the loneliest highway in america so I got two of those stickers to show that I actually drove it. Really cute, small little city. I met an interesting um, woman inside of the gas station. She also travels and she says she loves the desert and we had a nice conversation, but look at this beautiful, quaint, unique city. Small little courthouse right there. And I think we're almost out of here that quick. You blink and you literally miss it. This is Eureka. And they're saying is the friendliest little town on the loneliest highway in America. <laughs> so we're in Eureka. Like Austin, Nevada, Eureka, Nevada, is not really much to it. There's the fire department, it's pretty small. Got a, a motel, I don't even know if it's still up and running.
got a saloon. Got a Jackson House Hotel. It's a pretty small little town. They weren't lying. All right, fam. So before we leave Eureka, Nevada, which is known as the friendliest little town or city on the loneliest road in America, Highway 50. This is the perfect sign. And I had to get uh, some footage of this sign before we leave because out of all the signs that I've seen on Highway 50, I have not stopped yet once to show you guys. But this is a part of Highway 50. We're about to leave Eureka, Nevada, which is a small little town um, along Highway 50. <sighs> but man, it's beautiful. It is a rough highway to drive, I am not gonna lie. It's pretty rough. <laughs> it is rough, but me and my baby, we're getting through it. But here it is, guys. <laughs> Nevada, Highway 50. The loneliest road in America. Right there, look at that beautiful sign. I just had to show you guys. Okay, fam, while I was driving, I saw this really cool structure because you don't really get to see much on Highway 50 because there's nothing to see. But this is where I have been, we have been driving for almost five hours. And uh, while I was driving, this caught my eye. This is pretty funny. <laughs> Take a look at this. This is so cool. Nowhere, Nevada. They are not lying. <laughs> We are nowhere. I mean, you got the beautiful snow-capped mountains, a beautiful little like makeshift pond, but we're nowhere. This is literally nowhere. And this is wild, but it's beautiful, eerily beautiful, but I had to pull over and show you guys nowhere, Nevada. We are now in the town of Eli. Very, uh, very, very small, cute, quaint town. Another one we're just passing through. Um, a lot of old buildings. You got a motel, casino. We are in Nevada. You got to give some people a place to gamble. You've got uh, cute little stores. You know, let's pull over and, and take a look around real quick. We'll pull over. We'll take a look around. Why not? We got time, why not? We'll pull over right behind this RV. A lot of these buildings look fairly old. I don't know if some of them are being used or not, but um, yeah, let's see here. Let's go take a, let's walk around really quick. This might be a place I might try and actually stealth camp in. It's a very small town, you know? There is an RV here already, I don't know. The circumstances behind it i mean see for rent i'm assuming a lot of these buildings are kind of maybe abandoned but what is this this is a marble formation eli limestone rock type marble age 300 to 320 million years thickness 2500 feet wow that's incredible so this looks like a mining town or something I could be wrong but just looking at some of these beautiful stones what is this copper not copper look at me I know it's not another limestone Eli limestone altered limestone Pennsylvanian the age again there it is that's beautiful Okay, I like this nice little picture around it. You got a, like a little motel and casino, very small parking lot can hold like what, six vehicles? Uh, it's a Robinson District Copper Mine, Liberty Pit. So it's a copper and mining town. Not bad. Um, if you can see there's a bank, it's probably the only bank in town. First, the first national bank. You've got like a little restaurant right there. 
a little furniture store that looks closed and boarded up. Some beautiful artwork and stuff on these wall on the on the walls and stuff. As I'm getting ready to leave Eli and get back on track to being isolated again, I saw this beautiful, beautiful man-made lake. Look at this lake behind me. Look how beautiful that is with the snow-capped mountains in the background. Straight gorgeous. Still desolate, isolating, Highway 50. Every once in a while you'll get lucky and you'll find something to pull over and admire. Like we found that, we found that structure that said nowhere in Nevada that was funny. Um, you know, you've got the um, historic markers you can pull off and read. Beautiful snow-capped mountains and beautiful scenes that you can look at and admire, such as this. Like, I literally could not, not stop and see this and show you guys. I mean, this is beautiful. Still really isolating. You know, it's, it's you know, it's Highway 50. You know, you'll see an occasional car drive by, an occasional RV or something, but for the most part, yeah, it's not really many people out here. Isn't that beautiful? I could just sleep out here. If there was a place where I could sleep, I would sleep out here and just admire this beautiful view all day. We got a little less than an hour before we complete Highway 50. I finally made it fam <sighs> I did it I officially drove one of the most loneliest highways in America highway 50 from Fallon Nevada to Baker Nevada which borders Baker borders uh, Utah we're not going to Utah let's do it here it is welcome to Baker Nevada we did it. Home of the Great Basin National Park, White Pine. We did it. <laughs> oh man, this this stretch of highway is very, very isolating. I'm not even gonna lie. It, it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> even a loner like me, someone who doesn't mind being alone. I had my moments where I was like, I wanna see another car, a gas station, a house, something, anything. We did it. Okay, we are on BLM land. And uh, we're going to make us a quick dinner. Before I attempt to go stealth camping in Eli. I think we can do it. I'm just gonna put the juice in here. Um, normally I would drain it, but I'm good. I'm just gonna throw the juice right in here. Flavor. I'm just gonna cut these bad boys down center. Boom. Now we're going to add some seasonings. I like this multi-spice container because it has everything in one. So we're going to do garlic salt. Black pepper. And 
and paprika. We're going to add a few of these chili curds into here. Um, mmm. Wow. Pretty good. Wow. This is dinner. Okay, it is done. It is warm. That is what it's looking like. Oops. Look at that. Woo! It was just enough liquids. It's not dry. The rice is nice and moist. Look at that beautiful egg. Egg is cooked. Not overdone. And it smells freaking amazing. All right, got some egg in there, some sausage, some cheese. I mean, the vegetables, the works. First bite goes to you. Have that bite right there. Oof, my turn. Ooh. This has got the right amount of spice, flavor. It's not too salty. The coconut aminos is perfect. Soy sauce would have been salty. Mm -hmm. Perfect one pot meal. It took about 20, 25 minutes. I'm done eating. I still have enough for leftovers tomorrow, so I'm gonna put the rest of that up here in a bit, in a minute. But I came back. Remember I told you guys earlier that this would be a good place to kind of try and stealth camp downtown. This looks like the downtown area of Eli. It's a small, small town, but we are gonna attempt to stealth camp here tonight. I don't see any no parking signs. Um, and this building uh, looks like it's, it's a band like it's empty I don't know what it is but it looks like it's empty um hopefully it's not anybody's house but just an empty business that's a motel and casino straight ahead right there I don't know what this mr. G's place is but we do have some cars people out so we'll see if we can um, make it through the night and into the morning my goal is to get up at like 6 in the morning and be out of here Got the window covers up, but as you can see, like, the back is barely hanging on by a thread. Um, I tried my best to kind of put it in. Um, the rest are doing okay. Um, we got them up. And, as you can see, I have all my lights on. I feel really, uh, secured now. I feel officially stealth. Right now, what I'm doing is... I'm gonna clean this pan out really good. Um, I didn't do it so good back at the park, but we're gonna clean it out really good. This is my trash. I'm gonna put that up front here in a minute. And then this is my pan, or the rice cooker. And I'm gonna put it in here, but for now, I'm gonna rewash this out using vinegar, distilled white vinegar and water. Stealth camping in a small town, honestly, you would think would be really quiet, you know, but, uh, yeah, that, that's not the case. <laughs> Stealth camping in a small town, yeah, right. Uh, I think, uh, small towns are actually, uh, <laughs> a lot louder, um, than, uh, I'll put it right here by my feet, than bigger towns. I mean, I almost moved twice just because 
I don't know, man. There was this guy out just, I don't know if he was talking to himself or somebody or arguing or getting ready to fight somebody. I was like, I'm about to get up out of here. The sheriff drove through on his, on his, um, in his little small truck and the noise went away and it's been quiet ever since. And that was probably about almost, uh, I'd say 30, 40 minutes ago. not perfect but I'm working on it <sighs> I made it no one bothered me but it was I ain't going to lie it was it was it was busy and loud, and a bunch of teenagers were out till about four in the morning. Um, for the most part, I slept good. <clears throat> I had to get up during the middle of the night, put this hoodie on, because it got really freaking cold, man. It's a little past six, so I'm about to get up and head out. Oh, man, it's freezing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It is freezing. Mm. There is no fog on my window. Uh, I figured it out. Uh, let's take this down. Look, no fog. Everything is finally done and cleaned. Uh, met at the bed, took down the window covers. It was exhilarating, I'm not gonna lie. I was a little on edge the first like couple of hours that I slept in here because this city, albeit so small, it was so alive. Like, these people were out in these streets having fun. There was a lot going on. And so, after the first couple hours, I fell asleep, no problem. Woken up around 4 in the morning with some teenagers. Having a good time. It seemed like they were high schoolers, you know? Uh, went back to sleep, woke up uh, a little after 6. So it's now it's time to head out. I'm going to go wash my SUV again and uh, get my day started. But this is where I'm going to go ahead and end the video right here. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I really enjoyed driving Highway 50. It, it does, even for someone who's alone like me, I enjoyed it. But man, I can see it being a problem, especially at night when there's no light pollution. That's wild. But other than that, I really enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. There wasn't much to see. <laughs> I mean, it was desolate desert. It was like nothing <laughs> except a couple little things I pulled over. But thanks for hanging out with me and keeping me company.
but I'm out. Thanks for watching. And as always, I'll see you guys in my next video. Take care. Peace.